Will the Universal Hub V2 make you faster? Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and today I wanted to do a, yet another Fanatic product review. So today we'll be reviewing the Club Sport V2 of well, Club Sport Universal Hub V2 specifically for Xbox. I had received this probably about a month, month and a half ago and I'm actually been playing it very frequently and so far you know first impressions i absolutely love it so without further ado let us get right into a set of corza compizioni as i always do here um so we'll be doing the circuit nurburgring versus the full nordschleifer um with this kind of wheel well, i actually did want to make it a kind of a side here i actually we're choosing this track because I played this for probably about an hour and a half last night. Eight laps of the full Nordschleifer, so I'm quite familiar with at least the circuit portion right now. So first and foremost, when it comes to Fnatic products, um, I wasn't... I gotta be honest, I don't know what I was expecting. Um, I was thinking of something a little bit more higher quality than the McLaren V2 wheel or the Formula... Oh, what is it now? It's like the 2.5X, I want to say. And I was honestly hoping for something a little bit more in line with the quality of the Formula wheel. And when I received it, it felt... The wheel feels plasticky. And it's kind of got like a fake leather feel to it, more plasticky than real genuine leather feeling. And to be quite frank, I was a little bit disappointed because the whole bundle is, you know, 350 for the Universal Hub and then like another 150 for the wheel. So for spending nearly $500, it, uh, I wouldn't quite call it, it felt like a toy, but it just, it left kind of a weird taste in my mouth spending so much money and not having exactly professional grade however kind of the negatives end there because the well apart from the stitching which uh over a long period of time the stitching can kind of get into your thumb a little bit but if you wear some racing gloves while doing like line sessions i think you should be all right but that all being said the rest of the experience is quite positive because the buttons are having that cluster all throughout the wheel is really nice being able to move them around and being able to adjust them to where you want them to go and then button map them to various games um, I found it also interesting that there's like a button cluster on the very top of the wheel as well next to the display which you can either leave it flat or actually place it upright and of course, you can adjust what's on the display with either the Fanatec um, control panel or Fanalab. I've had some mixed kind of experiences with it, uh, mainly with like the formula wheel, per se. But for setting up at least this wheel, it was insanely intuitive being able to say, hey, I just want like the shifting light and all the shifting number, what gear I'm in versus, you know, constantly displaying the speedometer because I'm not going to look down there currently right now. If I, if I was lower positioned, the wheel was higher up, the screen was lower, I would probably see more of it in my line of sight. So um, I love the features. I love being able to see all these kind of pretty lights going on off of the seven segmented um, display. But I don't know. It's kind of a nice touch. And for those keen-eyed viewers, I did make mention a video or two ago that I have just kind of like a one-time um, foot cam. However, I have screwed around with my setup a little bit more, and I actually have kind of a permanent foot cam. So please enjoy uh, the slippers as always. But back to the wheel, uh, the shifting, the, the magnetic clicking kind of feel, the shifters, is much improved over the McLaren wheel. Uh, I personally don't mind kind of that clunky, almost kind of plasticky feel with the McLaren wheel, 
Uh, I understand the price range. You know, it is a wheel that is $200. Um, and it's the lowest product, basically, apart from the newly released BMW wheels that are going to be more geared towards the CSL product range. Uh, for the longest time, the McLaren wheel was genuinely the low sun total pull, so I completely understand the build quality might be a little bit cheaper. So, yes, there is some build quality adjustment to the uh, wheel here, where it is a little bit better than the McLaren wheel. I'm hoping that when you start reaching up into the podium series kind of things, like the uh, Porsche GT3 wheel, I'm hoping when I eventually get that, that we're going to have a little bit uh, higher quality because um, I would hate to be spending nearly $600 for something that still feels like a toy when I've got thousands of dollars into the setup itself. So the fun, most fun thing about this wheel is that versus like the McLaren wheel where your hands are locked into like a position. They have to be on either side of the wheel. So with this wheel, uh, you can actually more easily correct oversteer. And I'm very, very happy to say that. Where you can kind of grab up here. You can fly off the corner like that. But you can have, like when the oversteer kicks in, you can like grab up here and just really adjust it quickly. Um, I also really like this little strip here up here to tell you where... Uh, equilibrium is, you know, where the, basically, how tilted the wheel is, because you can't really see the wheel itself for most cases while you're racing, so being able to know approximately, you know, how far off you are uh, for making additional adjustments is quite nice. But the one other thing that I also did want to bring up, too, is... Um, as I was looking at uh, reviews for this wheel before I purchased it, I came across a channel by the name of Stabukin. It was, I want to say, about 225 subscribers. He is awesome. It's He brought up a lot of good points. He has very quick, short videos. And one of the things that he brought up was the weight of a wheel. Now, as he personally has the, I want to say it was the Club Sport V2.5 wheelbase, um, it's that was one of the last belt driven wheels by Fnatic before the CSL DD came out and one of the things that he brought up I can't remember if it was in regards to this wheel or if it was more specific to the BMW wheel was the concept of weight is that the wheel itself has weight and the more weight that the wheel has the I don't know if it's necessarily inertia or whatnot but it just has more natural resistance due to the fact that it's harder to turn it because it's just heavier. Now, I want to say with this wheel, it was about, you know, the version one of the um, Universal Hub was about four pounds with the wheel, with the rim attached. And then when you, you know, like when the Fnatic announced the version two, it basically was the identical buttons, the identical layout, maybe some additional... Um, I don't know, internal circuitry that may have been adjusted. But uh, one of the comments was is that the wheel now feels lighter. They managed to shave off about a quarter of a pound, and it was just... I haven't personally raced with the version 1 wheel, so I can't tell you how that necessarily feels. But I do definitely want to flip out wheels in the middle of this to give you kind of a comparison against the McLaren uh, GT3 V2 wheel, as that wheel, in my opinion, is very light. It feels like it's about two pounds, but uh, when it comes to this wheel in specific, the fact that it's like three and three quarter pounds and whatnot, um, one of the other things that Stabukin was discussing is that with the belt-driven wheels is that with that additional weight of, you know, a four-pound wheel, a five-pound wheel, is that with the belt-driven wheel, because it's not direct, you actually lose a lot of information. Um, so a lot of the adjustments that you need to make, you know, trying to avoid like a bump or something... ...or being able to correct that... Uh, you may not get that as as clearly, which is uh, kind of an interesting observation. 
Of course, with my CSL DD, it's a direct drive wheel. So I haven't had that comparison, the comparison of what the belt driven wheel feels like in comparison to a direct drive wheel. But personally, with the um, Universal Hub V2 for Xbox, I haven't felt like it's so heavy that I'm losing information. Um, it, you know, between the McLaren wheel and the Formula wheel and the Universal Hub, the CSL DD has done across the line, across all the wheels, awesome information sending, being able to let us know, you know, when oversteer is occurring and we need to correct it. And it actually does that, I feel, faster than the monitors pick it up, which is also kind of interesting. But back to the wheel. Um, it is perfect for racing with, for example, Forza, where you'll have like a lot of GT cars. I love being able in, in games to be able to switch out the wheels to be able to represent the car that I'm driving versus like racing a Mazda Miata with a four-wheel wheel. It's kind of a little bit weird. But this wheel here with kind of the um, fake leather and you know, just kind of the sizing of the wheel, it really adds to the experience of you actually feel like you're driving the vehicle. So I know I could be, be doing better on this lap, but somehow... I am managing to go nearly a second faster than my previous lap. So at the end of this lap, I'm going to do kind of a pro gamer move. And let me see if I can pull it off. Not quite. So immediate reactions is that the wheel just the wheel's cold, <laughs> obviously, but there is quite a weight difference between the McLaren wheel and the Universal Hub um, because of the lower build quality. Not by much, but just in general, the McLaren wheel feels very light. And I want to say that the Universal Hub, with the wheel, when you're racing with it, is about double the weight. It, it's, when I was saying it was about the difference between two pounds and four pounds, I think that's pretty much about right. Because this thing just, it feels like it just turns better. It might be slightly more, slightly more precise than the um, Universal Hub. However, again, like I've discussed before, when it comes to trying to correct oversteer with a McLaren wheel, good luck. Especially with the formula wheel, because when you correct it, instead of being able to kind of like grab the top of the wheel or do like kind of an overhand thing, it's literally just a uh, snaps. And it's... It feels like you're driving a fighter pilot or a fighter jet, which is, which is great. But again... Jets don't have oversteer, so having that more circular rim is it's pretty preferred. So the other interesting thing is now that I'm really starting to get used to this wheel, um, I do I do actually genuinely feel like more minute vibrations in the wheel that I wouldn't have felt with the universal uh, hub. Like it, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe the feeling, but it just feels like that I'm, my body is receiving more minute vibrations. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily information that's needed though, because it's like we're going straight and I'm getting like this little bit of a jitter. And I suppose it's realistic. Possibly. But I don't think that having the additional weight of the Universal Hub really takes away from the experience. I don't think that's the case at all. So I'm actually going to start 
focusing in a little bit here. I've completely thrown this lap. I'm actually glad that experience happened because it came up with something else here. So with the McLaren wheel, it's or even like a Formula wheel, if you turn to about 90 degrees, you might be able to turn just a little bit more than like 90 degrees to get like your full turning circle. So when swapping between wheels, you might you might have to adjust the um, kind of like the steering lock per se. Because with the McLaren wheel, I honestly wouldn't have a steering lock on more than 90 degrees either way. Because then it's it's like really awkward that your arms are kind of crisscrossing to get like a harder turning angle. But with the Universal Hub, that one you can, you can technically let it go like the full 900 degrees. I don't know if it's 900 degrees each way or if it's 450. But being able to actually be able to do the overhand method or, or being able to just really go into the turning circle is very nice when it comes to driving like old 90s formula cars or gt3 cars or whatever i would honestly recommend putting on a steering lock for no more than 180 degrees in each direction because there was a video that I posted of when I was reviewing the uh, Next Level Racing Wheel Stand 2.0, where in the Formula One, um, I want to say it was the 1988 McLaren MP4/4. I did not have the steering lock on, so as many commenters were pointed out, especially on TikTok. I was just overhand and overhand and overhand and overhand, and they're like, why are you driving a tractor? Like, what's going on here? So that would be honestly something to consider. But again, it is, it makes driving GT cars, old formula cars, more intuitive because you can't really get that full turning circle, say, with you know the McLaren wheel per se. And I personally have more fun with the Universal Hub V2 because, like, again, it's it covers more a wider variety of vehicles that you can try out where it doesn't feel like you're being disingenuous to the vehicle by having, again, like a McLaren V2 wheel or McLaren GT3 wheel in a Mazda Miata. But the other thing, too, is that the... Universal Hub is great for drifters as well. So if you are into video games where it focuses heavily on, you know, drifting, formula drift per se, being able to attach a wheel to the vehicle or to the wheel base is definitely imperative. You know, being able to have that uh, flexibility of being able to change out rims and as far as like the attaching the rims, I appreciate the fact that it takes a lot of work to screw in the wheels to the rims to the Universal Hub. But at the same time, too, Fnatic really pushes that ecosystem of instead of having one Universal Hub and about five rims that you can swap onto it, it's if you want to in the middle of like a gaming session, if you want to change out rims. So for instance, you're doing Forza Horizon and you pull up like an old style Ferrari and then you want to do something more modern, uh, being able to remove the rim from the wheelbase takes a little bit of time. So there's no hot swapping per se. And it really just pushes you to buy more universal hubs which I suppose is a good business model for Fnatic, but when they cost $350 for at least the Xbox version, it becomes very pricey very quickly because if you want to have a wide variety of wheels, I personally am looking at wanting to own approximately five or six wheels long term. So when I want to be doing that, I'll have to be adding $350 to each rim, which is already 120 to the 150 So this collection of five or six rims, instead of being a grand, 
becomes like five grand and it's just for what it's worth the build quality and whatnot really doesn't feel like it should be worth that much of course the flexibility being able to just dive into any sort of game and being able to really utilize it and being able to button map and all the rest of it again i enjoy all the buttons that you can use with it and the key map and whatnot but 350 dollars is a little bit steep so i realized just now i'm in the middle of a review of a wheel and i'm not even using it So let's go back to our lovely CSL, well, excuse me, Club Sports Universal Hub V2 for Xbox here. Again, kind of like I was stating earlier, uh, going back to this wheel from the McLaren wheel, a lot heavier, a lot sturdier, per se. Um, I think for the most part, a lot of my thoughts that I've already made still stand. All in all, though, I am quite happy with my purchase. It's Again, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, the fact that for a brand new wheel, of course, you will be getting some bundle discounts for adding the rim to the Universal Hub when you purchase it. But once you get over that initial purchase, this is absolutely worth it. So I would like to... I'd like to eventually start acquiring other wheels and start being able to do comparisons of is a lot of the weight that I'm feeling with the Universal Hub is it due to the fact that it's the rim itself or is it actually the fact that Fnatic is putting so much technology into the into the universal hub that it's just got to be the weight that it is because if they have anything less we'll be missing out on many key features that I honestly really really do appreciate So, that being said, will the Club Sport Universal Hub V2, specifically for Xbox, make you faster? Um, no. <laughs> First of all, just enough with the clickbaity titles and whatnot. This is just a genuine review of this wheel. No, this wheel is not going to make you faster at all. Um, but it will add to the realism of being able to race your favorite cars that you want with being able to swap out the different rims for each use case and that flexibility and also being able to move your button clusters around to be able to remove some and then add some and position them differently honestly you don't even need the button cluster like there is some buttons on the very top of the wheel hub that if you just have a rim and if you're driving like an old style Ferrari, you can get rid of that. You don't need it. But that all being said, this is definitely not a wheel for first time buyers. Go grab the CSL BMW wheel. Go grab the McLaren V2 wheel. Go grab one of the cheaper formula wheel, um, wheel rims. And that will be a good start when you really start getting into wanting to have more flexibility of your rims wanting to be able to get something that is more realistic to what you like then go for this because again it's a very hard pill to swallow initially but after purchasing it i think you'll absolutely enjoy it so of course Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what kind of wheel stands or wheels or rims that you guys have. Love to see what you guys have down in the comments. So, of course, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.